when we maladapt to our instincts with respect to the outer world, that's when we generate neurosis. Young men in particular mm. every day yeah. who are so caught up in Jungian ideas and Jungian theory that they don't have a life. Then you've got your prefrontal cortex which is your thinking rational side and there'll be some elements of conflict between the two. Hi everyone and welcome back to Young to Live By. Today we've got another episode of Ask a Depth Psychologist, our series that we run on the YouTube channel where if you're signed up at the $10 tier or higher on Patreon, you could submit a question for myself, Steve and Pauline to dig into on the YouTube channel. And today's question comes from Gospel of the Wolf and he or she, I believe it's he, says, I found my mind blown by the video regarding the superiority complex. We'll link that in the description down below. I'm an INTP male who thwarts his own potential due to feeling guilty when I put in honest effort. As a result, I often feel trapped between two poles, that of a desire to thrive and that of compassion. This video described my inner dissonance to a T. The solution, as I recall, was deepening social interest, a la Adler's theory. Can you expand on the concept of social interest and if there are any special warnings or trappings that one should be aware of? What do you think, guys? Oh, thank you. That's, uh, that's a, a kind comment about the video. Um, I'll approach this in a, an unusual way, a, a little bit, a little bit of bleak, uh, you might say. Adler was a necessary compensation for Freud and a necessary bridge to Jung, but at the same time, he kind of leapfrogs Jung as well because of Jung's very, very heavy emphasis on introspection. Historically, it goes Freud, Adler, Jung. And you could say that um, that's the order in which you should learn them, and I generally recommend that. Uh, Jung himself said the same. He, he said you should study Freud first, and then Adler, and then him. Adler is uh, a complete body of work that stands alone with and for itself. You, you could follow an Adlerian path and not look at the others. Lots of people do. The concept of social interest, though, and even the inferiority complex and its obverse, the superiority complex, I think can be usefully looked at in a, a different way. And that is to move away from Adler uh, and bottom out right down into instincts and then come back up into Adler's theory after you've understood what's going on at that level. The reason why I say this is that you avoid psychological reductionism and even psychosocial reductionism. You've um, described yourself within a Myers-Briggs framework as being an INTP. That brings all sorts of things with it as well. Um, you have to be sure that you are one. Mm. You have to be sure that you've always been one. You have to be sure that you always will be one. Three very, very important questions that would pressure test the whole concept of you being an INTP. So let's get beneath that and see what's going on. Fundamentally, it'll be about adaptation to the world. And this is where Adler comes in with his social interest. And the idea that an inferiority and a superiority complex, which always work together, by the way, to some extent, will be involved in your adaptation. And he would suggest that social interest is the solution he does suggest this, the solution to an inferiority complex or even the superiority complex. <coughs> but what's really going on? What's really, really going on with you, with any of us, that we should reduce our perspective down to psychology? Let, let's get back to first base and see where we're actually originating from. We come from our genome. We have a genetic inheritance which is expressed then through instincts, instincts to adapt. When we maladapt to our instincts with respect to the outer world, that's when we generate neurosis. Then we have psychological theories that interpret that neurotic maladaptation. But primarily it's about instinct. If you have a lot of potential uh, and then you become embarrassed by it, you could interpret that as an Adlerian superiority complex. It fits the psychological and psychosocial model of Alfred Adler very well. He then suggests that the remedy would be social interest, that is engagement with people, engagement positively with others, with society, and that would move you away from a biological or an instinctive emphasis. Now that is the right direction to go in. Your instincts paradoxically want you to go in the direction of adaptation to society and culture. But let's not lose track of instincts altogether and remember this, that Adler's um, insistence if you like from within his theory that you should do that was 
the result of him moving away from Freud and him regarding Freud as being instinctive and biological and the usual pejoratives that are thrown at him. But remember, if we want to do that about Freud, if we want to separate ourselves from him, we have to set something up as a justification for moving away. Jung did exactly the same. Um, and he did exactly the same with respect to Adler too. So the three of them constructively misunderstood one another in effort to describe their own models. Let's get away from that. Let's look, again look at instincts, what, what, what's really happening here. In a Myers-Briggs frame, seeing, seeing as you've chosen to look at that, as an INTP, your extroverted intuition would map on to the Pangsepian seeking system as an instinct. This is the extroverted side of you, according to Myers-Briggs. So you're going to be orientated towards the world in that way, but it's your auxiliary function. It's not your dominant function. Your dominant function is thinking. And that's introverted, according to the Myers-Briggs. Let's look at that again. Another little change in resolution. The thinking function, when it's pure in Myers-Briggs and therefore underneath that, Jungian uh, terms, is very prefrontal uh, cortex. That's great, that's fine, that's fully human, it's perhaps even uniquely human. There are other animals that have a, a refined and high level of consciousness with respect to their level of neurological development, but with human beings it's really well refined. But your intuition is far more instinctive. Jung called it irrational. Uh, the sensing function and the intuitive functions were irrational to him. It didn't require cognition, it was just about action. Either internally focused or externally focused, but it was engagement with something in a living sense. It was information processing, if you like, from a, a modern psychological sense, um, but irrational in the sense that Jung meant it, that it didn't involve cognition or evaluation, evaluation being feeling from within a Myers-Briggs or a Jungian model. So you've got then both your instincts in the form of extroverted intuition pushing you to act on the world and then you've got your prefrontal cortex which is your thinking rational side and there'll be some elements of conflict between the two. So your seeking system is pushing you to adapt and then your thinking function is saying, oh, can I do this? Should I do this? And it's, it's evaluating everything, analysing everything. So the two of them are not working together. That's what you're probably really feeling. And then interpreting that in the way that you have. Social interest, if you had it, to the extent that you uh, feel that you want it, having watched that video, would mean that your thinking and your intuition would work together. You'd be out in the world. You'd be engaging with society. At a biological level, your panksepian instinct, your seeking system would be fully engaged um, and then you would get the best level of adaptation. So what I'm saying is that underneath all of the psychological theory as such, from those great pioneers from the past, Adler and Jung and Freud, there is instinct. And our genome doesn't really care much for psychological theories that try to explain it. It is simply what it is. It's simply so. And you'll feel that instinctive pressure to engage socially. How you think about it for your dominant function will be where you generate the mismatch. Now, I don't want to sound like a CBT therapist because they're far too psychologically reductive. But with an introverted thinking type, you do need to engage your auxiliary more, particularly as it's extroverted and it has to do, whatever that function is, by the way, has to do with the outer world. So I would reframe how you're conceiving of this, that the social interest is your goal, but you need to engage deeply with your instincts in order to achieve that. That deep engagement is not a thinking thing to do. It's simply just letting yourself do it and engage. You'll find that your thoughts change just by doing that. So rather than tackling your thinking, which is the, the CBT way of doing it, which is why it nearly always fails, uh, engage with your instincts properly to be social and you'll find your thinking sorts itself out. And then as an INTP, you'll find your energy sorts itself out. And there'll be no need to interpret things psychologically in that desiccated sort of way, whether that's Jungian or Adlerian. The outcome of all of that will be that you will be doing good Adlerian things. You'll have social interest, but you wouldn't have had to have modelled it that way. You just do it in a natural way. Instincts, when they're happy, 
that means you're happy that means that neuroses go away it's as simple as that the fundamental thing is to get your instincts aligned behind you mm. what do you think paul i i think as a as a young person you don't actually need young to either explain um or solve the problems that you that you feel you have i mean i i I, I, it's so much more important um, when you're young to be in touch with, in terms of the model anyway, with Freud and Ardor in terms of your adaptation. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't be interested in younger Jungian ideas, but you know, as Steve has said, uh, things can become uh, psychoreductive very quickly, and mm. then if you reduce things down further to type, then you're reducing things psychologically even further, yeah. and that's not going to to help you. Uh, to adapt to the outer world. In fact, we we deal with young people, young men in particular, mm. every day, yeah. who are so caught up in Jungian ideas and Jungian theory that they don't have a life. Yeah, that's true. And so, you know, I would I would e I would emphasize the biology. I would emphasize the the social adaptation. So, for a young person, I I, I would go to to Freud and Adler every time, yeah. really, in order to get them orientated to to the real world. And as Steve has rightly said, you can explain that need for social engagement and for being out and, and extroverted in the world through uh, the idea um, of the instincts, through um, you know, uh, Panksepian instincts. You don't need to necessarily go into young no. to understand that properly. No. Um, and and as you rightly uh, flagged up, Steve, too, with respect to the INTP profile, well, is it is it indeed accurate for you? You, you know, you are a, a young person. It may be that it's just become a way that, that you've adapted to the situation that you find yourself in and bears no resemblance to, to the real you at all. You, you really do have to pressure test that you and do. be absolutely sure that that's an accurate description. Yeah. And I know Steve has said this before in other videos, that you know you shouldn't reduce yourself to, you know, to four letters no. and to say, this is me, I am an INTP. It, it's, a, it's a very dangerous and reductive yeah. thing to do. Yeah. Um, but if, if you, having said that, to apparently contradict myself, if you do feel that that is absolutely right and you have pressure tested it, then I, I think you have to bear in mind things too, like, um, the, as we would call it, uh, the relating function in classical mm -hmm. Jungian terms, the anima, uh, and in particular the negative anima. Yeah. Uh, and if it is operating in your life in some way, then it, it will be in your dominant function. That's where it will make its insinuations, yes. where it will attempt to un undermine you, and so on. So. Yeah. You, you have to broaden out the way maybe in which you, you're modelling your own situation and, and bring some of those ideas in as well. But I think fundamentally, Freud and Adler, you know, they would absolutely get you going and, and reorientate you to life in a, in a very productive way for your time of life. Um, there's time for young later really yeah, yeah. In, in terms of living your life through those ideas um, so i would say get the basics right first and then and then come back to young yeah. if you feel you'd still need to yeah. thanks paul um <coughs> one of the the ways of doing it is actually to go through the personal myth process you will if you do that find mm. out who you are yes that's what it's for that's the intentionality of it is to really really uncover your through line find out who has influenced you, what your core ideas and values are, where you stand right now. That's your personal equation once, once you've solved that. Then you can approach Jung and his idea of individuation with authenticity because you've, you've sorted it out. You've, from the very earliest memory or the very earliest influences upon you right through to today, whenever you, you watch this video, that's your, your, your narrative through line. That's the, the journey work of your life. You need to understand that before you can authentically move forward because otherwise all the traps that have been laid in the past will just reappear again so i would suggest that the personal myth process as being the best way to sort <coughs> yourself out then you can approach reductive psychological theories and you can pressure test them properly without simply being influenced by them as ideas 
That's an important thing. It, it is. I mean, obviously, you know, you well, you don't reduce yourself to no. to a four letter code, no. uh, but but it just for for the for argument's sake, if, if we say that you are an INTP, Steve, whatever that means, um, then certainly uh, probably throughout the whole of your life, you have used your intuition, your Jungian yeah. intuition, to um, <clears throat> mediate the outside world, and and it can be extremely effective mm. uh, in warming up situations of engaging people. Of getting people to respond to you positively it's yeah. a great rapport builder yeah. extrovert intuition work where it's working well yes yes yeah and uh, there's so much about type thank you Paul there's so much about type as well which we, you need to be declustered from yeah um, the unconscious has no type no typology is, is about the psychology of consciousness to understand that in depth you'd need to do a little bit more study and then it will become clear. Yeah. But the proliferation of nonsense about Jung's type theory is is an overwhelming force in a way out there on the internet and it has to be it has to be seen for what it is. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one gigantic straw man, I'm afraid. It's not how Jung intended his theory to be used at all. So remember, it's all about consciousness. There is no unconscious type. Yeah. No, um, it's really, really important that, that if you want to work with your unconscious in a Jungian mm -hmm. sense, you have to accept the unconscious for what it is on its own terms. Do not internally project your own ego backwards in there, and any fantasies or complexes that your ego might have, that it could have internalised from the culture, whether that's a Jungian theory-based fantasy, an Adlerian one, uh, or based on any philosophy or, or belief system. The unconscious doesn't care about any of that. It mm. is what it is. And in order to experience it, it's polite to ask it how it wants to present itself to consciousness. So the more that we put in the way of experiencing the psyche as it really is, the more of a distraction we become to ourselves. So, uh, yeah, th there's a lot There's a lot more you could be doing that would, yes. would, would help you a lot more than worrying about that. But if you want to solve the problem of social interest, mm -hmm. then it's your young and extroverted side, your extroverted intuition. Um, the thinking will sort itself out if you adapt. And at bottom, it's instinct. And behind the instinct is your genome. And it's intentionality. It's teleology for your lifespan development and adaptation. Yeah, I, I, I would look at where you're limiting yourself with that four letter code. I mean, the, yeah. your negative animal would have a field day with oh, yeah. that. And, and may insinuate that someone, because you're an INTP, that you're an academic and you can't socialise and you yeah. can't be good with people or, or address things in the outside yes. world. It, it, yeah. You know, all of those things could be man manipulated um, yeah. if you believe that that's, that's all you are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just, just be careful. There are traps in there. There are. Um, you, you, you'll, you'll find that the uh, so-called negative anima will be looking for confirmation bias. Yes and it will look for it in the stereotypes of the collective consciousness. Mm. In other words, the cultural nonsense that's out there uh, to do with type theory, for example, and, and for other aspects of Jung's model uh, as they are currently interpreted and as they're pushed by uh, internet pop Jungians and gurus. Um, if you fall for that kind of influence, your so-called introverted thinking will just consume it and then feed it to its extroverted intuition, which will propel it back out into the environment, looking for confirmation bias, all of which is being directed by Jung's negative anima, and you'll be trapped. Yeah. Separate yourself off from these influences. Discover the psyche for what it is. And what it's interested in is you. It's interested in your genomic potential, you fulfilling that as optimally as possible ac across your lifespan development, across that trajectory. That should be your focus finding out who you really are, not how people have suggested to you that you should interpret yourself. Mm. That's a journey work, and that's a journey work of the personal myth. And that's what I would suggest that you do going forward. If you're looking to take your study of depth psychology and personal development to the next level, using Steve and Pauline's 40-year-long clinical experience as your personal guide, then make sure you check out Young to Live By's flagship offering, Discover Your Personal Myth, ultimate handbook. For anyone who has a calling deep in their very genome to become who they truly feel they should be, this guide is utterly indispensable. Pick up your copy today and make 2021 the year you truly begin to become yourself.